here in South Africa. Now, TikTok, you're just in time for another trend-inspiring Afternoon Express Masterclass with me, Balisa Dembe. Students from Silwood School of Cookery are joining us to help us master the TikTok tortilla wrap hack, upgrade our quarantine banana bread with a cinnamon swirl, and make a Thai green curry. And we're going to be ending it all, all off with a fudge cocoa brownie. I'm definitely looking forward to that. But now, starting us all off, Silwood School of Cookery is one of SA's most acclaimed cookery schools. The first step on many culinary journeys of some well-known chefs, food producers, and food writers around the world. Now, we're lucky enough to have two of Silwood's finest student chefs in the loft with us today. We're joined by Olwe Tumtembu and Matthew Boltman. Now, they're about to uh, let us get to know them a bit better with a deliciously warm cup of five roses for their very own new tea latte range. But before we get into all of that business in the kitchen, welcome to the loft. Thank you so much. Let me also get my tea ready, because listen, <laughs> we're about to divulge in the tea. Yes. Now, Matthew Oluetu, it's just such a pleasure. Not only are we kicking off Youth Month with a bang, I just want to get to know you guys a little bit better. So can you just tell me a little bit about you and how your food journey started? You want to go first? Well, <laughs> I've always had like a fanatic with working with my hands and being creative with my hands. So I think that's where it kind of started and sparked. But um, ever since I discovered Food Network Channel in grade three or four, yes. then it just sparked on from there. I always wanted to experiment with flavors, creating new things, and it just like worked on from there. Boom, just like that. Yes. You, 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 you're addicted. Just from there, every day. Look, some of us are addicted to the eating of the food. Some of us are addicted to the preparing of the food. Someone who is addicted to preparing food is you, Matthew. Can you tell me about your journey? Well, for me, uh, I would say it all started with my mother. You know, she basically cooked growing up and it all stemmed from there. Mm -hmm. um, later on, obviously, I wanted to try something new, found Silwood and, you know. Yeah, I think uh, Silwood, ha its reputation speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. You guys bring out nothing but the best when it comes to chefs, food producers, food writers. Mm -hmm. So when it what makes Silwood so special? For you, what is it that, th that thing that just makes it excellent? For me, I think the most rewarding thing about Silwood is getting the opportunity to work into industry. So even if you leave first, you're unsure of going into the food industry, you know, okay, this is how the industry operates. And I think that's just one of the most rewarding things. Mm. And as well, you learn skills that you put into practice every day. It just becomes second nature, picking up the knife, how to chop an onion, how to do this and that. It's just one of the most rewarding things that I've learned from Silwood. Oh, I love that. Purpose, a purpose-driven life is what it's all yeah. about. And for yourself, Matthew, when you do attend a school that's as critically acclaimed as Silwood, when you see yourself graduating, coming out with your chef's jacket at the end, mm. what are some of the top tips you want to walk away with? Top tips, honestly, um, the main thing for me is the discipline that they gave me, uh -huh. you know, and um, regardless of where I end up at the end of the day, um, the main thing that they gave me was that, like, just that I know I can work with these people, mm -hmm. you know, the best chefs in South Africa. Oh, well, cheers to <laughs> that. I love getting to know anyone that steps into the loft because at the end of the day, we are going to be putting you through your paces. Now, we both know that our budding chefs are more than capable in the kitchen, but can they take the heat in our five roses? How's it, brew? quiz. Now guys, this is essentially how it works. We've got a few quick fire questions lined up and the winner gets to walk away with an awesome five roses hamper. Now it's super simple. You guys have squeezy toys next to you, ne? Okay. All the way to holding us down with the duck and uh, Matthew as the gent. Baseball. You got the baseball. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how it's going to work. Because I don't want people yelling at me different answers, you're going to have to use your squeezy toy to indicate who's going to answer the question. If you think you know the answer, just use your squeezy toy and then I'm going to direct the question to you now. Okay. Right. Perfect. First question goes a little bit like this. Which country introduced Thai, uh, chai tea to the world and made it so popular today? Tea. Use your squeezy toy. Chai oh. tea. Chai tea. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yes, on where to? I don't know. Thailand? No. No. Definitely not. The real, the right answer is India. India, India oh. was the country that introduced the world to chai, chai tea that makes it so popular. So round one goes to nobody. But don't worry, we've got four more rounds to go. Second question. True or false? Tea was originally created as a medicine before being enjoyed as a leisure drink today. Yes, Matthew. It should be medicine, yeah? So it's true. 
Absolutely. Round one goes to Matthew. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> Back in the day, I mean, thousands of years ago, ancient Chinese medicine has been using tea and brewing it for thousands of years. So absolutely, I can see you've got your cheerleading squad on deck. Round one, go round two rather, goes to Matthew. But here's question number three for you all the way to hopefully you can catch up. <laughs> Five Roses has been a part of our homes for over 110 years now. Oh. But how long ago was tea said to first be discovered? <laughs> Ish. Use your squeaky toy. Ish. So we already know that it's been thousands of years, mm. ne? And we also know that Five Roses has been a part of our history for 110 years. Mm -hmm. So generally, just give it, just guesstimate. <laughs> no clue. Are you guys drawing a blank? No I'm clue. I'm just go for I'm it, no just clear. say random numbers. No. Say it. Yes, Matthews. Yes. 500. So, so, so close. Almost 5,000 years oh. ago by a Chinese <laughs> emperor. You were almost there. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> oh, everyone, okay, so the gallery is saying, give it to him. I'm going to give it to the adjudicators upstairs. I think okay. he was off by, I mean, so many thousands of years. I mean, come so, on. Okay. Uh, it's a hail to, okay, I got a resounding no from upstairs. So it still is Matthew just with one point. Guys, I'm very disappointed, but question number four goes a little bit like this. Five Roses tea lattes are available in three fantastic flavors, from chai to sirloin and mocha. But my question to you is this, which country is famous for its mocha today and what color is it? For its mocha? Mm-hmm. Mocha. Well, mocha. Some people say mocha, some people say mocha, a matcha. Matcha. So we know it comes in three flavors. We've got some matcha, we have got some ceylon, and we also got some chai. But what country and what color is mocha? Matcha. Matcha. Yes. Uh, it's green. Is it not? Yes. I mean, I was trying to hide my, my tea. Absolutely. Yes. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. But that's one part of the question. Second part, what country? Japan. Oh my goodness, girl. Yes. yes. <laughs> Japan has made it famous, but it was originally discovered as a Chinese tea. And indeed, it is green. So this last one, I mean, guys, I, I'm even getting hot here. I had Your to put my tea face. down, honey. <laughs> so it's square. So whoever gets this one walks away with an incredible Five Roses hamper. And this is how your question goes. Five Roses tea lattes are ready to drink in seconds. But how long does it take you to brew your perfect cup of tea? A perfect cup. How long does it normally take you from brewing, uh, you know, boiling the water, putting the tea bag in? Ooh. You're all the way to attack is letting you down today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ish. Three to five? Eight how did you know? Wait, first of all, uh uh. I don't know how fair this is. And no. one way to I rank can... her little no, no, no. My, toy. Mine won't. So I just say. <laughs> I'll just say. <laughs> Who did that go to? Because absolutely. <laughs> Alright, so you still get to answer those. So I don't know if you okay. want to steal Matthew's answer or you want to go with a new answer. I was gonna say six, seven. Girl, you should have just stolen Me? his answer. Three to that five. Is, yes, it's too late now. <laughs> Congratulations goes to Matthew. Yes. You are the winner of today's incredible challenge. You get to walk away with a 1,000 Rand Five Roses hamper. Congratulations oh, goes to you. you. And thank you so much for joining us, Olwet. Thank you. Cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. From games to a whole lot of cooking. Now, we are certain that by now, everyone has come to learn about the trendy tortilla wrap that has done its rounds on TikTok. But let's take a look. Baby, work it.
I mean, my stomach is already grumbling. Mm -hmm. But since it is Youth Month, we are keeping the trend going by celebrating the foodie trends from this youthful generation. And we all know that no trendy tortilla wrap is complete until you add that elite taste of clover cheese. Mm -hmm. Do me. Oluetu, mm -hmm. I am ready. So Oluetu, you already know. Silwood, you guys are known by these. Yes. This is what you're all about. <laughs> so you're gonna bring the heat here? Yes. So Dumi, what are we making? Balissa, we are keeping with the trends here and making that tortilla wrap ourselves, but we're gonna be adding some of our own little flavors mm -hmm. into it. If there's one thing I love about these new TikTok trends is that they make cooking and being in the kitchen so much easier, mm -hmm. so much quicker. Yeah. So the simplicity of this is that Oluetu is gonna make a nice thick tomato sauce for us. From there, you're gonna be grating some cheese that's gonna go into this elite wrap that we're making today and then I'm just going to put it all together for you and see how nicely it actually comes together to become this beautiful masterpiece. Happiness. Yes. Oh, so are you ready Oluetu? I believe this is uh, not only is it a TikTok hack but it's also just something that's very close to your heart. Yes it's very quick and easy. So here um, I've chopped up some tomatoes so I'm just going to chop up one now for you. Okay and the ingredients and that you have there is? Yes so we have some one onion that's been chopped and then we're going to add in some garlic just for a little bit of flavour and some olive oil just so that it blends easier in the blender. Okay. And then we're gonna blend that and put it in a pan just so it can reduce. So it takes about an hour to reduce into this thick paste that we have here. Okay. Yes. Do you want to just pass that over? I want to sure. show the viewers. Uh, because normally if you were to make a tomato sauce or a tomato gravy, something of that sort, it would be very runny, very uh, watery. Yeah. But what, if you look at this, what has happened here is that it's been reduced for so long okay. that all that liquid is evaporated to create this beautiful paste that mm. you have here. So you're basically showing us how we got to this. Yes. So it's the earlier parts of it. Yes. Right? But also, Oluetu, it's something that, first of all, is it safe to already call you chef? I know you're in the beginning of your foodie journey. <laughs> yes, not yet. I haven't graduated yet. Okay, let's put some respect <laughs> on the real chefs and we'll just call you Oluetu for today. Yeah. I mean, when it does come to um, tomatoes, mm -hmm. tomatoes are very acidic. Yes. They almost can pack a punch if, you're not, if you haven't cooked it through yes. completely. So this is a slow work here when, you, when it comes to creating yes. the sauce. Yes, so we just add a bit of sugar to it as well because you, as you said it's acidic and then by cooking it down, reducing it, we get rid of some of that acidity as well so it's just easier to the palate as well. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. Do me on your side girl, you got your tortilla. I've got my tortilla started here so all I need to do to make sure that this trend and I'm living up to what it actually is, is they, they need to make, we need to make a little slit here on the one end because we're going to fold it over each other uh, into quarters. So before I fill it up I just want to show you this is what we're going to do. We are going to create a little pocket basically so it's a one pot wonder type situation <laughs> where it's a one bite one tortilla type situation mm -hmm. everything in one mm -hmm. so before we go too far I'm actually just gonna get started and fill up with that tomato paste that Oluatu sure. to made for us okay and that's essentially just gonna be that base you Correct. Know? yes it's all about the flavor yes, it's all about the flavor ma'am blitz it up there. I can see it coming together. Mm. I can see those tomatoes breaking down. Yes. So we're just going to add some more so it just thickens up a little bit as well. Okay, but love that. Alice, I don't know how you're looking there with the cheese because the oh. one thing I want to make sure of because we're doing an elite wrap here. We're mm. taking it to the next level. We're keeping it TikTok and making sure it's simple and easy, but it's not going to be a tortilla wrap. It's not going to be elite and quality if we don't add that cheese in there, girl. Tell me about it. <laughs> now, with the elite taste of clover cheese, you can add a variety of clover cheeses and make this recipe truly truly tasty I mean just because it's a trend day today we can it does not mean that you can't put mm. your own flavor your mm. own flair and your own twist to this recipe yes. so right now I'm just grating up some cheddar cheese I've already grated up some tasses for us but you can go wild you can add so many different varieties yes Correct, Palisa. Like, we've also got some chorizo here that we've sliced up mm -hmm. and we've cooked in the pan. So what I'm going to do is we've got our, our spinach that's going to be the center of it. I'm going to add the, the, the... Actually, let me put the chorizo over here because what I want to do is I want to fold it into the inside of our... Um, our tortilla and then the cheese is going to go at the very end the last part of it okay. because i wanted to get that direct heat mm. and melt up nicely yes. so that when you bite into it it shows you that stringiness of it yes. and we've got our tasses and our cheddar in here Palisa, right? yeah definitely tasses cheddar on deck and girl can i tell you we still have this huge um slice this huge you know a whole lot of cheese <laughs> so i might just take this home <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, Bali, but I also want to ask you if you can pass me some of that sauce because what I want to do is normally, okay. if you were to have something like this, you'd serve the sauce on the side, but I don't want to do that, girl. I want to keep it nice and saucy, so I'm going to add some of that sauce mm. into this cheesy pot, yes. you know? You know when you're having cheese uh, uh, pizzas and they say it's a 
a mayo, chicken mayo pizza. Yes. They actually add the, the mayo into the, the actual cheesy part of it. So I'm just going to wow. add. Wow. Yes. You know, a lot of the times, always, to when I yeah, do well. make my own tortillas at mm. home, you know, trying to follow these TikTok hacks that make it look so simple. A lot of the time, I just end up adding my sauce or whatever mm. I'm adding to it to the actual tortilla yes. wrap. And, I mean, that flavor is yeah. diminished by the time it comes off the grill. So the trick here is to add it to the cheese. Correct. Yeah. And it will hold. Yeah. Okay. So then at the end of the day, it is Youth Month, though, Oluz. Okay. You are a youth. Yes. How do you feel about Youth Month and what does it mean to you? Youth Month, um, I'm very excited for the Youth Month, actually, this year. And um, it's just me, youth empowerment, youth um, strength, and yeah, just all about the young people. It's all about that. Viva, viva, viva. viva now, yes. Dumi, as you are getting that uh, nice and golden brown, that is what true eliteness is all about. Mm -hmm. To get the recipe, just head over to Afternoon Express. Thank you. This is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. I do me, I can already see that cheese oozing out of the sides of that tortilla. Um, as Uolwetu is about to cook down that sauce as promised, mm -hmm. we still have to remember about social media. You know, we always ask these social media questions at the top of the show, and here is today's. Now, this week is all about our favorite TikTok recipes. So where do you draw your cooking inspiration from? Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. But do me, this is only the beginning of our Cook Along Masterclass. So what do we have lined up? Vanessa, we have a whole lot lined up next we're going to be making a banana bread with a cinnamon swirl in the center you want to stay around for that delicious all the way to you ready yes i'm ready matthew is waiting out in the wings as well so see you after these
show where we are joined by Silwood student, mm -hmm. budding chef Oluetu, and of course mm -hmm. our resident chef Udomi. Now we've been doing some challenges and sharing some of the trends that we already know are popular all across the couple of months that we've experienced our lockdown. And banana bread has definitely take the, taken the cup. Mm -hmm. At some point, everyone has tried to make a banana bread, but let's watch this TikTok. Hello, let's make cinnamon swirl banana bread in 60 fucking seconds. For the cinnamon swirl, you're gonna have two tablespoons of unsalted butter, three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of brown sugar, sit, two tablespoons of ground cinnamon, melt two sticks of unsalted butter, pour in your butter, one cup of sugar, whisk, two eggs, whisk, two cups of all-purpose flour, stir it in, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon vanilla extract, mash four ripe bananas, fold in your bananas, you want to combine it very well. It should look like this. You're going to take your pan and line it with parchment paper. I personally like using parchment paper. You don't have to. Take a half a cup and put it at the bottom. Then mix in your cinnamon mix, like so. And then just keep layering it until you run out. 350. This is what it should look like. I like to lay some banana slices. Again, that is optional. Middle rack, cook for about an hour. You want it to be golden brown. Look at how beautiful. I'd actually cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. Hope you guys enjoy. Yummy. Now this week we've been keeping it fresh in our Afternoon Express kitchen with our young chefs, all inspired by Youth Month. Mm. And now we have another recipe courtesy of Ulu Olwe Tumtembu. And she's about to show us, as a Silwood student, how to throw down. Yes, sir. So today we have a banana cinnamon swirl bread. So do me if I can ask if we can just get our dry ingredients sure. together. Awesome. So she has some cake flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, baking soda, baking powder, okay. and then um, some brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter just for like the swirl. Okay. Add a little bit of finesse to it. <laughs> and then if I can just ask if you to mash some bananas for me, okay. that would be great. So here I've got our wet ingredients. So I've just got some eggs, sugar, light brown sugar, yogurt, and melted butter, and just gonna mix that together. And then I'll just get the bananas from you. Maybe. Okay, perfect. So I did notice um, in that TikTok that we just watched, or sis, he decided to leave some bananas at the end just for the top. Just for the top. Okay, so I won't mash all of no. them. I'll make sure. Okay. You Brilliant. And now when it comes to a banana bread, it yeah. blew up <laughs> on social media. Why do you think it's so popular? I think just bananas are just an easy, convenient ingredient. Everyone has them. And even if you leave them on the stove, on the shelf to just sit there and rot, you just take them, yeah. but add some flour, salt, sugar, and you've got banana bread. It's so simple, it's so easy, mm. it's almost foolproof, hey Dumi? Definitely, Balissa, and the one thing I loved is that everyone showed us how differently you can make uh, banana bread. Some people were using um, a, a bananas only as the binding ingredient, some people were going a bit extreme like some of us right now, because we're making sure we're adding that layers of flavor. Yeah. So we've got some yogurt over there, we've got some two kinds of sugar, brown, and white sugar and now we're adding our own swirl to it and into the swirl we're adding um, some fat spread we've got some brown sugar and some cinnamon so let me just quickly make that swirl so you see exactly what we're talking about all we're doing is that we're going to take some of this um, fat spread put it into our our bowl here mm. and then just make sure that we can combine and incorporate it together with the sugar and the cinnamon and that creates somewhat of a paste that then goes into um, our bread so as it bakes up you see the beautiful light color from the banana bread and those beautiful specks of brown from the cinnamon swirl itself and this is essentially what's making our recipe very different from what we already see blew up on TikTok. Correct. we are adding that cinnamon swirl now when it comes to banana and cinnamon those flavors seem almost perfect to me don't you? definitely balissa i mean anytime you're making some such kind of recipes like banana bread or chocolate or stuff like that it pairs very well with cinnamon so okay. this is something that you can definitely incorporate even if you're making pancakes I think you could make the swirl and add it into your pancakes over there and add a beautiful dimension of flavor yes. And then into our dry ingredients over here. I had those uh, that baking powder baking soda some flour I also had some cinnamon and nutmeg that's been sifted nicely into this bowl mm. as soon as all to is done and Balesa is done using her elbow grease Yay. All of this is gonna go into that <laughs> mixture and then we swirl that cinnamon yes. Beautifulness into this banana loaf. So we went for bananas that are actually a little bit on the raw side they were still a little hard but you can feel free to use whatever kind of bananas if you you know those overripe bananas yes. I think those are so simple so easy to mash up but here look it's happening 
definitely, Palissa. Uh, and the one thing I love about that, even though we're using the bananas that are not too ripe, the perfect thing about that is that it gives you pieces of banana as the banana bread yeah. bakes inside. So oh. instead of us leaving some banana at the end, Palissa, and putting it inside, you're doing a pretty good job over there. So you can actually leave yeah. it like that, so you don't have really? to worry about yeah. it being too much. Okay. Hi, okay, perfect. <laughs> then let's add that banana in there. And at the end of the day, let me actually use this. This can be used um, at the top of that loaf. Yes. Correct. So I'm going to leave these little banana pieces for Dumi at the end there. Thank you very When you put much, it all into Bali. your baking tray. And then we've also got some walnuts in here as well. If you want to, you can add nuts. You don't have to. It's completely a preference thing. But we also always like to add texture. Whenever we're cooking or baking in the kitchen, we always mention texture. So I'm just going to add some of this into our flour, um, our dry ingredients. Because like we always say, you don't want it to sink to the bottom of your mixture. So I'm just going to add our dry ingredients into the wet. And then swirl in our cinnamon swirl. And Balisa, that's it. Put it into an already greased banana loaf. And let it bake. How long would it bake, um, Olutu? Probably between 35 to 45 minutes. And that's it. Once it's baked nicely, you'll see those beautiful swirls on the inside of the banana loaf. I love that. So, Olutu, as we are putting our finishing touches on our banana bread with a cinnamon swirl, what is the key tip to remember when putting this together? In putting this together, just make sure your bananas are properly mashed so they mix into the batter properly and don't over mix your flour too much, otherwise it'll become dense and yeah. Yeah, we don't want that, okay. Mm -hmm. As you can see, Palissa, so I've also just left, uh, left a bit of specks of flour in there because you don't want to overbake yeah. it. Yeah. I've put in half, I'm swirling in that cinnamon swirl and then put the rest, all of that that goes into the oven. Just like that. Just like that. Now, trends do come and go, but one thing is always guaranteed, yes. is access to all of these recipes. And if you would like to top up your recipe collection, then head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get this recipe and all our other Youth Month inspired recipes. Yes. the loft now Matthew it's your turn are you ready yeah <laughs> I've told him listen uh, we it's time now we already had all the way to come through and she showed us two magical recipes but you also have two magical ones yourself yeah feeling confidence um yeah so so we'll see 
Well, I'll see. I'll see. We'll see. We'll see. The late great Tata Matiba always championed the youth of our Rainbow Nation mm -hmm. and knew that they were the key to our country's successful future. From sports to academics and culture, South Africa is overflowing with talented youths. And today we have the chance to share our studio with a few of them. That's where you come in, Matthew. Yep. Now to celebrate the depth of our youth in our bright, colorful nation, we have decided on a spicy, Thai green curry on today's menu using the goodness of Excella sunflower oil. It's always better together with Excella. Now, Domi, what do we need for this recipe? Well, I think the name says it's, uh, it's all in the name, Balissa. Excella meaning excellent product, meaning quality, meaning you don't have to worry about different funny smells, anything like that. It's so great. It works in this kind of recipe because it's uh, almost like a stir fry with the noodles. Okay. So you know that even though it's cooked very quickly, it's a quality product that you don't have to worry about, you know? Mm. Um, and I love the fact of its versatility. We're using it now in a curry, but you could use it for a baked dish. You could use it to grill your chicken. You could use it for anything. And what I'm doing here, the ingredients that are going into our Thai green curry is some uh, curry paste. We've got some onions, some fish paste. We've got some water chestnut, mm. sugar, some ginger that I'm just going to lightly chop up and put at the end, and some peppers. All of this going into the chicken that I'm going to nicely chop up now. Brilliant. Matthew, you can get started. Cool. And I mean, on your station, what are you doing? And what, re what ingredients do we need for it? Okay, so basically... We're gonna make a stir fry noodles. Okay. Um, super simple, super easy. Um, I'm just gonna uh, chop up some onions. It's already chopped up. I'll chop up some peppers. We're gonna saute that in a pan, get some nice color on it. We're gonna add our noodles, some soy sauce, some lime. Sure. Matthew, you seem like a very simple guy. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem like much bothers and it ruffles your feathers, Matthew. <laughs> so is this a recipe for someone just like yourself? Uh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> we are celebrating um, the youth today. We are celebrating youth throughout the month of June. So when we are creating this, what should the youth remember? From TikTok all the way into the home. What should they remember? Mm. I would say... Um... Keep a knife sharp, I guess. That's like the main <laughs> thing for me, you know. <laughs> Spoken like a true chef, but yeah. like keep your knife sharp. I think if anything, people should remember that it's all about the flavor. We're using Thai green curry today. If you want to change it up, you want to make it a red curry, you could also use a ah. different kind of paste. If you want to keep it simple and still make it a very typical um, Indian type of curry, you could still do that and use those kind of flavors like the corianders and the ginger and so forth. So it's all about taking the flavors and making it work for you and also keeping it to what you like and what you enjoy. So for this step here, what I've done is I've added our uh, green curry paste into the pan now. It's on a high heat. And let it cook down for about 30 to 60 seconds and then add the rest of our ingredients. I'll go in with our onions that have been roughly sliced here and then go in with the rest of the ingredients. The chicken, let everything basically come together. Okay. Make sure that the chicken absorbs that flavor, the onions absorb that flavor. And yeah, just create a masterpiece basically. I love the fact that you keep talking about flavor. I mean, yep. Matthew, as you just continue to cook and you put in all your ingredients with in that wok, I can see you've already gone in with the Excella oil. Yeah. Okay, and then as you are adding all those um, other elements to the dish, what I love about Excella oil is that it's light, it's clear, and bonus, it's odorless. So it's also suitable for frying, grilling, baking, just like Bumi has said, and just so, so much more. I mean, this Excella oil that we are using today, it has that natural taste, and that enhances the flavor of your food. So whether you are uh, cooking it, frying it, you are not compromising on that flavor every single time. Perfect, Alisa, exactly. You know, you're not compromising or, one, or worrying about your uh, actual ingredients being altered in any way. Yeah. You keep the natural flavor of whatever it is that you're making. So into our dish, by I've just added our peppers and our onions and then in goes the chicken and basically all that's going to happen now is we're going to let the flavors mellow together and cook down. The chicken is going to saute up and because the, the heat is quite high, yeah. you make sure that the chicken gets cooked perfectly so the veggies are going to stay nice and crisp, the chicken is going to cook down and all those flavors that we've got here, we've got some fish sauce. And then we've also got some coconut milk that's going to go into this. So our sauce is going to cook down. The chicken is going to absorb all of that flavor. And we also add a little bit of sugar just for a touch of sweetness. It doesn't need to be sweet, but all we wanted to do there is just to balance the flavor. And then in with our coconut cream. 
and let that just basically cook down and be a nice, beautiful green sauce. Beautiful. Now, Matthew, um, as I am just chopping up, I'm just chopping up the garnishes. You know, I've got some spring onion in there, I've got some basil, and um, I also just have, you know, just that, that green touch, just to mirror that same greenness Correct. of the curry. But we are doing something that is Thai, it's traditionally Thai. What inspired this uh, recipe for you, Matthew? Well, honestly, it was the simplicity for me. Um, I enjoy Thai flavors, honestly. I, 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 I could cook this, you know, maybe twice a week. Yeah. Yeah, so it's super easy, super enjoyable, and it's great, you know? So. Definitely does. <laughs> now listen, I'm going to be tasting it towards the end of uh, this little cooking moment that we have. So I'll give you uh, that rating out of the <laughs> But before I get into the rating, I've been saying this from the top of the show and echoing it um, on our Tuesday show. We are celebrating Youth Month in the month of June. So what does Youth Month mean to you, Matthew? I think just celebrating your youth, I would say, you know, um, going out, having a good time. Nothing, you know. <laughs> that is such an interesting yeah. answer. <laughs> hey, Dumi, everyone has gone with like such deep, motivational, yeah. like, we're at, viva la youth, viva. <laughs> but we've got Matthew saying, you know what, I'm here for a good time. Yeah, that's, that's also what it's right. all about with being young. Yeah, exactly. Right. Here we go, Dumi. Alyssa, thank you so much. So this garnish that you've chopped up nicely goes perfectly on the top of our noodles and our uh, Thai green curry, and that's it. Beautiful. Now, with Excella, everything just comes together that much better. Now, if Dumi can just give me a taste of that and I'll let you know how I feel. There we go, Bali. I've got some that we made a little earlier. So all you need to do, let me just pass it over here, Matthew. Mm. You give that a taste. Let me know what you think. Here's a spoon. Wish me luck. <laughs> mm. Good. The flavors. Bursting, but also it's not quite um, different to the flavors that we experience in our kitchens on a daily basis right. So yes, this is a Thai green curry, but we're still keeping the flavors very local very lekker But Domi, we're still going to be cooking so much more, ne? Yes, Palissa, we're going to be making a delicious tasty chocolate fudge brownie. You don't want to miss that <laughs> Now, Matthew, you brought us this recipe. Yep. I'm enjoying it already. I'm not even going to wait until the end of the show. Oh. And you also <laughs> did promise us a delicious brownie. So are you ready yeah. for that? Sure, yeah. What are we going to be adding into that? What, what elements can we expect? Brownie, it's honestly a super simple brownie. Like, um, the idea is just to like mix your wet and your dry, put it in the oven. Um, it's super gooey, super nice. Mm. It's perfect with some custard. It's perfect with anything. Yeah? Well, all of that when we return. Join Olive Pride Chef's Tour and travel the country as we cook along with Luyanda Mafanya, Ruben Riffle and Young Bride every Tuesday on Afternoon Express. Win one of ten cooking appliances weekly or a grand prize of a kitchen makeover with 150,000 Rand. To enter, buy any Olive Pride pack and dial star 120 star 2462 star with your unique code to enter. Prepare to be proud.
welcome back to the Afternoon Express Kitchen. Now, when you pose a question, what is your favorite baked goodie to any youth of today? The answer seems to top the chart is most likely a chocolate brownie. Now, in agreement, there is nothing more decadent than a fudge cocoa brownie that is best served with the timeless taste of clover classic custard as we are about to make Dumi. yes palessa and as with the youth i'm there as well chocolate <laughs> fudge brownie <laughs> always and forever i love my chocolate brownie palessa and what better way to zhuzh it up and give it that extra flavor than with some clover classic custard yes. palessa this is essentially what we're aiming for you see this gooiness this fudginess do you see how amazing it is it looks really really good and also i love the fact here that you are putting a huge dollop of that clover classic custard on the top the accompaniments for any dessert basically. exactly what more would you need balissa nice warm uh, fudgy brownies with some clover classic custard which is enriched balissa with so many nutrients it is perfect with anything perfect as a topping perfect as an inside it's completely up to you yeah. but to make the part of my uh, my steps today what i'm doing is i'm going to be sifting our dry ingredients we've got some flour we've got some cocoa powder and i've got some vanilla essence that's going to go part of our batter here and then and matthew you've got I've got some sugar, okay. some butter that I'm melting down, uh, two eggs, some salt, and some oil. And we're just going to combine it. Uh, that will be our wet. You'll be about dry. We mix it together. Awesome. And <laughs> to make it even more decadent, you've got some chocolate. I mean, look, uh, you might call me a chocolate queen, but no, I'm really <laughs> holding down the chocolate today. Chocolate station, here we go. I love it. And we definitely played here, Dumi. We've got a different variety of chocolate. Yes, Palissa, we've got a different variety of chocolate. And the one thing I love about such recipes is if you're making something like this, you could add whatever kind of chocolate. I know most people think, oh, if I'm making a dark uh, chocolate fudge brownie, I'd need to use dark chocolate. No, you can even use the white chocolate in there because those specks of white just ah. make, give it a nice beautiful looking uh, look because like we always say you eat with your eyes first mm -hmm. so it just makes it even more decadent and this young gentleman over here Balissa gave me a nice little tip he says before we bake our chocolate brownie I must add some molden salt to it so chocolate mm. flakes into it Balissa tell, tell us why Matthew tell us why well with anything sweet you want to basically have a balance with it so when you're adding the salt, you know, there's a lot of sugar in this, as you can see. Mm. Sugar, butter, so a lot of enriching ingredients. So when you add the salt, it basically helps, you know, balance it out. It breaks that up a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dumi, and you've already added that now. Yes, Palissa. So I've added, so I'm actually adding it at the end as per Mr. himself here. He said don't add it inside, add it just at On the top. top. Yeah. <laughs> so the oven is yeah. Okay, brilliant. Now you are hard at work here. You now have mixed up um, that sugar. You've added some Wait. oil, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to add it now. Oh, okay, yep. and then the eggs. Yeah. Talk us through the, the whole process oh. of putting this together. Okay, so basically you want to mix everything together, all the weights. Um, so when you melt the butter, you obviously melt it separately with, you don't add the eggs yet. Because if you add something hot to eggs, it's going to cook the eggs. Yeah, yeah you're going to get scrambled yeah, eggs. Exactly, yeah. So um, from there, basically mix it together, add your oil, a little bit of salt. Salt for taste. Salt for taste. Oh, sorry, the vanilla is it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Are we just mixing it all together? Now, we did speak about the consistency. We are making a fudge brownie at the right. end of the day. So it's all about making sure that it's that gooey, soft texture that Chef you spoke about. Oui. So how best can we make sure that that comes together in that way? Make sure we don't get something like a stodgy mixture. To be honest, it's all about how long you cook it. Okay. So this one is going in the oven at about 175. Mm -hmm. at, and we're only going to cook it for about... Um, 20 minutes. Yeah, and That's the other thing, Palissa, is, is if you can see, we've not added any raising agents into this mixture because we don't want it to be light and fluffy and airy. We don't want that. Yeah. The whole idea is to get that nice fudginess in the center, right? Mm. So that's all we're doing now. We've added those wet, in, uh, wet ingredients into the dry mixture here, folding it all together. And this is the one time where you don't have to worry about overmixing because at the end of the day, it goes into that um, oven, bakes up nicely. And I'm going to add that salt that you mentioned. Mm. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that step. Mm -hmm. And Palissa, you've got our chocolate bits. So uh -huh. if you happen to miss out on the uh, fudginess in the center, that's going to help. I can only imagine that when you take a bite out of that brownie, that chocolate that would have melted through just adds that different dimension. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew, do you have a sweet tooth? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like this recipe so much. Yeah. yeah. And if at any point you're worried about your chocolate bits getting um, uh, going to the very bottom of your pot, uh, your batter, you don't have to worry, you can always add some at the top. So I'm going to add some at the top, even though you said I must just add the salt. Mm. I'm going to add some chocolate as well, because why not? Sure. Okay, so I'm going in here. 
into our cake batter, into our tin. Can you see this consistency we're talking about, Valessa? Yeah, this is yeah. all we want. Yeah. Goes into our pa baking pan that's been lined with some greaseproof paper. Mm -hmm. And then add that Baldwin salt on the top, add some chocolate pieces. And I think it wouldn't be fair of me to, like, because I see you eyeing this. Do, do you want some brownie, girl? I, I have to taste it. I have to <laughs> taste it. So I already tasted your uh, your chai green, your, your, your Thai green mm. curry. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to add that sweet ending to it all. Now, I do not have a sweet tooth, Matthew, unfortunately, I have to say. But what I do oh. love about pairing it with that Clover Classic custard, you just add that dollop there, girl. It is, you can eat it alone, the Clover Classic Custard, or you can enjoy it the way we are today with that brownie. And if you can just pass me that spoon. And now let me, let me, let, let me give you my rating. Please do, Bale. Okay, let's see how are it Are you goes. giving Matthew a yes? Are you giving Matthew a no? Ooh, okay. Mmm, mmm. Okay now, <laughs> okay now, absolutely delicious. Thank you so much, Matthew. Thank and you. thank you so much, Domi. Domi, tell the people where they can get this recipe. You can go on mm. to the www.afternoonexpress.co.za for this recipe and every other recipe we made today. Mm. So, we've had classic fashion from Timby, classic cars, thanks, Chad, and we've seen classic hairstyles. <laughs> and you, Michael? <laughs> classic. A classic range from Clover. Timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. Express
Guess who's back, 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 back again. And <laughs> Ivo, the people's favorite. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, Clem. I love being in the kitchen. Thank you yes. for always bringing me in. I think it needs to be more than just like once every quarter. Uh, I don't know who to talk to. Who, who needs to be bribed? Well, first and foremost, we're just grateful that to have you. I mean, South Africa, we're basically going from brrr to mmm. Chef Clem is back in the loft to warm up with your favorite Woolies winter sips and artisanal treats. But before you climb back under those blankets, just give us a moment because he is about to show us a fantastic hack with a hot chocolate. But let's take a peek. I mean, is that what you're promising me? Um, and then some. <laughs> okay, so what do we need, Kim, and what makes this a hack? Well, Woolworths wants you to have the most amazing winter ever, you know, and they, they've got like the ultimate treat, the, 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 those aisles, when oh, you yeah. walk down, <laughs> I know. You, you get like a neck spasm, because you're just like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, and they literally deliver every single winter, and this, yeah. they, they, they've not failed, okay. I'm gonna make you that beautiful hot chocolate that you just saw. And it's layered, right? It's got the white chocolate at the bottom and then the milk chocolate on the top. Yeah. And then it's got the marshmallows. It's everything satisfying. And I feel like when you make a drink like this, you gotta, you gotta set the mood, right? Yeah. If you're doing it for yourself, it doesn't matter. It's all about, I, I think it's like a ceremony. I agree with you. You treat someone. It's like, it's 2020, 2021, different times, you. right? Everything that you do, you make it special. Okay. And this drink is special, but I'm gonna need a little bit of help. A little okay. bit of help. Okay, let's start off with the white chocolate part. I guess we got the we got the white chocolate, we got the milk chocolate, and as I said before, Willie's came through. They got the red velvet, they got everything, the dark chocolate with the chocolate bits in it. Oh, different everything, flavors. Everything's there, everything's there for every type of person. Life's like a box of chocolates. Ooh. You know, you know, you just know. Giving, just you keeps know. giving more and more yes. and more. I'm here for it. Kim. But I'm gonna I'm gonna come through because there's, there's an actual promotion now, you can actually experiment at all. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. First, I'm gonna need you to help me. We're gonna make that milk chocolate cream that goes on the top of this hot chocolate. Okay. Oh. And there's quite something satisfying about having a hot chocolate. But first, you get this cooling cream that you work through. Oh, your taste buds and your senses just go like all over the place. Love that. Okay, cream goes in, and I say whenever you whip cream, it has to be nice and cold. Are you going to struggle to get the air in there? Really? You want to go one step further? Chill your bowl. Pop it in the fridge for a little bit. Okay. It just helps lock in all that air, and you're going to get. You can see it's going to whip up so quickly. Then. Brown sugar, because who said you can only use white sugar when you have cream? I don't, I don't understand it. I, no. I don't get it. This is what, what essentially I love about this is that it definitely is coming through with all that sweetness. We'll talk about a winter warmer. Right, and I feel like if you're gonna, we're all still staying home. Yeah. Of course. So if you want to treat yourself, do it yourself. Stay <laughs> home. This is how you do it. I love that. Okay. okay. Let's go. So I'm gonna, like I said, we're gonna layer up. So your cream's in there. You can kind of start with your cream and your ch chocolate going in there. Okay. I'm gonna hit in with the hot chocolate. Are you good? Are you good? <laughs> I, I, I chose not to wear an apron. <laughs> I ch it's my fault. Aye, 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 aye. Get it's it, my get fault. It, okay. 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 Hot chocolate goes in. One more time. Just one more. One more. One more. I'm okay. I'm gonna put it on like the the lowest little whiz here. I should have just gone in with a hand whiz. You're on your own this time, friend. I love yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, we with you. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, you know what? You stop that. <laughs> you use if, if I mean I mean things are like grrring on the table. Hi, 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 Clem. Okay, hand whiz works perfectly well. Okay, <laughs> what you're gonna do is you're gonna whip it up those nice and stiff. And that's what you want. It's gonna hold its shape. Well, do you think do you think of a hold it over my head? I got you on your own the same. No, those look pretty stiff. Like those peaks look pretty stiff. I think it's safe. <laughs> it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. You got the essence of the sugars in there, the chocolates in there. Yeah. Step one is done. Okay. Then you're gonna get out your uh, sister. You can stop. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was gonna let it go. I, I saw that. I was, gonna I saw, I was I like, no, I love her. I'm gonna tell her it's okay. Well, it's you did I... ask for help in the kitchen, yes. so we're just trying to help you, my brother. Thank so you. essentially, you whip it up, and it's gonna come to a stiff peak like that. And now here comes those right. beautiful flavors that you promised us with the Willie's brand. And this part is so easy. This is the white chocolate, and this is so decadent. Okay, you want to bath in this. Oh. It's like it, the the smells. Oh, wow, what right? is that? Wow, right, that's white chocolate. Clem, that's that white is the chocolate. white chocolate? Yeah. Right, so that's gonna Delicious. go in your hot milk. And while I'm doing that, let me tell you about it. So, Willies are now running a promotion. If you're gonna get any other winter treats, and we've got 
the beautiful rusks, mm -hmm. we've got their tea cakes, we've got the hot chocolate, and we've got the coffee, because Woolworths knows what the winter essentials are. Yeah. You get that combination, and they're gonna help you save 20% on that shop of any, I mean, you mix and match your shop. Wow. And you accept the 20% on your save. And let's talk about these, these rusts, okay? People have been eyeing these rusts since they walked in. Because <laughs> I, I think it's like the season, a season for rust, right? And I'm they, not gonna lie. I even had this uh, little pack of rusks behind everything else because I was like, this is coming home with me. You can I have it. I love a you can have rusk it. dunked in with that hot chocolate that we're about to make. Beautiful. Absolutely. And those rusks are very special, right? Yeah. Made in the boiler, free range eggs only. It's these special little angels that make it. <laughs> right? Same with the tea cakes, free range eggs, uh, uh, free, only free range eggs in them as well. And those are so decadent, so delicious. Because I feel like if you make a have a chocolate, I guess you want something sweet on the side. Absolutely. And then what's winter without coffee? 100% Arabica. Super full bodied and bold. The coffee. You know what? You can even mix this up. Wow. Add a bit of coffee to this. Oh. Now we just let it. White chocolate, coffee, milk chocolate. Marshmallows. Why not? Why not? Okay. Hot milk goes in there. And you're going to give it a mix. Someone's getting let. Someone. Okay. Who's getting. Tumi. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but Tumi's doing it. But girl, I know I'm the one with the sweet tooth, so I don't mind. I know I'm going to add a little bit more extra hot chocolate. You can. Noir. You can. Absolutely. Yeah. Make it your own. Right. So, okay, I'm going to make one. I'm going to make okay. one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm going to make one beautiful one. Tumi, I'm going to switch out off the show. It's fine. Okay. Then we got our beautiful cream that I'm going to say you made this for me. Thank I you. did make it. <laughs> That's my blood, sweat, and tears. And can, I, can I also just say something? If you want to cheat on a chocolate mousse, Oh, wow, yes. That's another this hack, this one. This is it, okay. Uh, I don't think that gets enough. Yeah, add some more, add some more. I mean, we can essentially get our hands on this basket of ingredients. All you need to do is go to woolworths.co.za and you could be enjoying this decadent treat. Look at Clem I'm leveling mixing up, up the recipe. I'm mixing it up because I like, uh, you're going to get a little bit of chocolate on the top. Marshmallows and the baby marshmallows. Always. The baby marshmallows. I'm very excited about this promotion and I love the fact that uh, Woolies has decided to run this during Youth Month because trust me, the youth also have to make sure that their financial pockets are in order. <laughs> so that save, it's a huge save. That 20% is nothing to be played with and it's something we can all enjoy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay. I, I think it's only fair that some has been tasting throughout the show. Okay, I'm going to taste you. this. <laughs> I love that. Now on that note, we have got some good news for you. If you want to stand a chance to win a 1,000 Rand Woolies hamper full with winter sips and treats. Just hop over to our social media pages and tell us what is your favorite Woolies winter treat. Remember to use that hashtag Woolies Winter. Competition closes on Monday, the 7th of June, 2021. T's and C's can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Thank you to all of our guests that have joined us throughout the week. Thank you to our Silwood students as well that have been holding us down. Remember, you can catch our full yes. um, repeats. We finished! <laughs> our full repeats Saturday at 8.30 p.m. But good night, stay safe and happy eating South Africa. Goodbye. <laughs> Here's to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.